Hi, it's me, your favorite artist that you're obviously subscribed to. Today I'm going to show you how to draw, color, and shade hair. I'm going to first give you tips on how to draw hair, what you should do, what you should not do, and then I'm going to actually go through the process of doing it. So tip number one is to never draw hair in strands, alright? Don't do this. Alright, this, this is unpleasant, it's terrible to look at. It, it just doesn't look nice and it looks too messy. Oh, I drew it on the wrong layer. You want to keep hair in chunks like this because it makes it look neater and less messy and overall it just looks nicer. Tip number two. T uh, ha hair has a source point which is where it originates from your scalp. So if the source point was right there then all the hair goes out of that source point because that's how hair works. See? All the hair would originally from there. Originate from there. Tip number two is um, there's a space between the head and the hair when you're drawing. So it's generally like about that much, right? Because if you drew hair on the same level as the head, then you're gonna have a flat head. No one wants a flat head. That's just sad. See? Flat head. So you wanna have like a space around your head. And you don't want it to look over exaggerated in like different places. You don't want like a variety of spacing. So like, let's say over here was like this much of space. And over here was like this much of space. It just creates inconsistency. Generally, you just want to keep the same hair spacing throughout the whole head. All right, now I'm going to actually get to the drawing portion and I'm going to show you how I draw, all right? So, let's put the source point right there. That's where I want my point to be. Now, I usually always start with like a hair in the middle, you know, the average anime with the hair in the middle. And then I just kind of, you know, I just kind of built off from there. And then when you're done, just erase what's ever in the hair. Now we have a head with hair. So then I'm going to draw a ponytail to show you what you should do when you have like groups of hair like, um, I don't know, being clutched together. Like a ponytail or pigtails or whatever, all right, that's what I'm trying to say. You want to place your ponytail somewhere. We're going to place it right here. And something to remember with ponytails is that they don't forbid the laws of gravity. You can't just have a ponytail just going like that when there's no sense of wind. To have a sense of wind, you want your kind of hair pushing this way. If it's just hanging down, just make your ponytail hanging down as well. So we're going to put our ponytail right here. And we're going to make it hanging down. So now that you have your hair, uh, invert it, normal vert it, to make sure it looks normal on both sides. If it doesn't, if it looks weird on one side, then you obviously did something wrong. That's a tip for another day though. So we're gonna make our color scheme now. So a color I wanna do is red. I like shading with red, or coloring with red. Oops, that's why. So let's make a color scheme first. We're gonna do, oh, I actually wanna do this kind of red. This kind of red's cool. So let's make a color scheme, all right? To do a color scheme, let's pick a color, drag this down a little, move the hue, bam, we got a color, another color, another color, and then once you have all of these colors, we're gonna pick a reflective lighting color, which is basically how 
the sky. I think it's the sky. I don't know. I think it's how the sky reflects on you. So it's usually blue. So we're going to make it this color right here. This is our reflective color. So let's get started to coloring. Before you color, I would recommend putting your line art to a different color other than black. So like this color I have right here and then setting it to multiply. So it changes depending on what color. Oh, so it changes depending on what color you put underneath it. So like if I have red, it looks redder. If it has blue, it looks bluer, All right? Let's get to coloring. Okay, now that we laid out the base color, then we can get to shading. So, you want to make hair shading look pu like puffy, not like a brick wall, alright? I don't know really how to describe it, you just kind of want to make the hair look fluffy. I'll show you how I shade hair. So when I shade hair, I usually like make a strand. I do this. I like kind of make like zigzags to emphasize that there are multiple multiple hair strands. Oh wait, I didn't preserve opacity. Click on a preserve opacity when you're doing this. So then you don't like go outside the lines. So I'm just gonna Put some zigzags to make it look like there are multiple strands of hair and then when you fill that in kind of just like do a little bit more and then pick pick the base color again and then just kind of like go in you know This creates like a texture of that the hair looks soft and puffy instead of pretty hard. And then sometimes I just randomly go in, add like a little triangle and then just kind of blur it out at the end. So it, I don't know, it just, I, it looks nice to me. So once you got this, I usually go back, pick the base color, add a little zigzag underneath it, the same shape as that we had a previous. And then I just kind of fade it outward. You don't have to do this, this is just my personal style. Then I go back with the number one shading color and I just kind of clean it out so then it looks like that. And then I just kind of refine it. So you want to do this with all the hair strands that like the main hair strands that are in the front. So we're going to go and we're going to just fill in the color. The reason I have these little bumps right here is to show like that the hair kind of, I don't know, it, it's like the hair segments. So I just kind of like put little shading here to show that the hair is coming from this way and then I just kind of fade it out at the end and put some hard shadows, you know. Alright, now for this back head to show where like the ponytail is being pulled from, I usually shade horizontally instead of vertically. I, I shade vertically on like the bottom part because that's obviously going to be covered with shadow so I'd fill that immediately. But then for like these lines I kind of just like go over and like kind of shade in the general direction that they're being pulled in. So like that and then I just kind of blur it out in some parts. Except for here, because since this is being covered by a clump of hair, we want to put a heart shadow. Now, for the ponytail, you want to shade the top of it and shade in the direction that it's being pulled in, because it's being pulled down because of gravity, you know. And then you want to put a heart shadow to where the head's covering it, and then that's the basic thing you need. Then when you're doing it down here, just shade it like a regular clump of hair. Put zigzags to show that it's like different hair, hair strands. 
Uh oh. And then just kind of add like little lines connecting with other lines. Pretend there was like a line between them, but you erase the middle part and it makes it look like, I couldn't tell you. It makes it look nicer. So now we're done with base one shading. So this is what base one shading looks like. Now we gotta get to the second shading. So when I do second shading, I do darker parts. I don't, I don't like cover the whole thing with the second color. I kind of just like go to, I just think to myself where the darkest, not the darkest parts, but where the darker parts would be. So like they would be in between like the hair, under the hair. And then also with this color, I kind of outline like the like the zigzags that we did earlier. I outline them. It's just my preference. I mean, it just adds a little bit of stylistic to like stylistic thing to it, you know. And then I just kind of go back to putting hard shadows where they would be. Now for this part, on the bottom would be where the, like a darker part of the hair would be. So I would automatically just fill in the bottom with this. Then I would kind of just barely put these here, just kind of put them fading. Just blend them in with the the regular values. Don't overdo it, or else it's just gonna look too messy. Just kind of like add few of them. Don't add too many of them. And now, for the ponytail, we're gonna add where the darkest parts would be. And then, like regular, we just kind of want to outline these parts and put them where the darkest values would be. So now that we got that out of the way, now we want to do the darkest value. I'm going to actually make this a little bit less saturated. So I'm going to change the color to so what the hell. Oh, it's unlocked. I'm going to change it. What the hell? Does this even change? Oh yeah, it did change, it barely changed. All right, whatever. Uh, I'm just gonna change the color to that. Now, we would use this color for the darkest, darkest parts. So I wouldn't add too many of these. Oops. So I would put them like in clumps of hair where they meet, like barely visible. Well, I mean, not barely visible, we obviously want it to be visible, but I would put them like between where hair clumps meet. And then for like the back of the hair, I wouldn't do that much of it. Just kind of like, bam, look, they exist. Right. So then I'm just going to kind of go over. Oh, I forgot the top of the hair, my bad. So for the top of the hair, for the base too, you just kind of want to do the same thing, but add barely any of them. And then for like, oops. Um, and then for like the darkest, I would barely kind of just smudge it, not smudge it, I mean like barely add it in and all and all, so it doesn't overpower it. Back to coloring with this color. And then for the ponytail, you just kind of want to put it to where the head less rests on the ponytail. It's so like, right there, it's good. And then on the actual ponytail, you just want to put it where your hair comes meet. And yeah, now that we have all the shades on the hair, we wanna go back with reflective lighting and we kinda just wanna put this in places where like the sky would be reflecting on it. So I usually just, to make it easier, I just kinda put it where like the darkest parts would be. Hold on, I'm gonna change this. Oh my Jesus. How come these colors aren't changing? Oh, it's cause it's underneath. All right, that makes sense. So I'm gonna change it, the reflective lighting to that color. The the reason I the way I got this color is that I put the darkest color 
and then I put the like the like a light blue color and then I just kind of like find it in between you between these two Sai has like this feature where you can mix two colors with each other that's what I use to find these colors so then we're gonna put this in like in places we're not gonna override the shadow too much like the we're not gonna override the shadow too much with this we just kind of want to add it lightly so we know it exists so let's put it like on the edges of the hair that's where I would put it in like where the darkest places are not that much though Oh, I also forgot to color this part. Yeah, if you just forget to color somewhere, it's not that hard to just, like, go back over it, you know? So, yeah. And then, we for the top part, we kind of want to add a, a little bit more than we would for the other parts. Because it's on top, you know? Right. And then, there. You know, that looks nice now. So, we don't need this anymore. Get out of here, no one wants you here. Alright, the next step is like the lightest tones, alright? Like the reflective lighting. This is more of a stylistic choice. You you can literally do whatever you want, alright? Some people do this thing where they kind of put like a squiggle on here, squiggle on here, and then like it's like it's connecting. You know, this is more of a stylistic choice. You can add your own style to this and it looks right, alright? See the way I do it is that I take a layer, I clip it, I put it to Lumion Shade, and I have this one certain brush that colors, that it, it like looks like strands of hair. So then to pick a color, you just want to put this all the way on top, kind of pick like a, like a light color. So a good color for red would be like orange. I have the opacity, Lumion Shade, and then I just kind of like, you know, do strokes of these strokes also since the head is curving this way i want to like add depth by like oops by like stroking where it should stroke i don't know i explain it this is going terrible all right i'm gonna do a bigger brush i just kind of want to and then yeah so now what I do is that I take the eraser tool and I erase the curvature of the head and then I just add back some of the highlight front of the hair and then on like the back of the hair and maybe right here. This is a, like my style of like lighting, brightening up the hair and I just kind of move it to where I would want it to be. So now after that I take a multiply layer I take like the second color of the shadow and they just kind of oh that looks terrible oh that looks terrible right. maybe I should just use regular red right. regular regular red is our best bet and then I just kind of do it on the top and then I change the layer and then I just kind of fade it out on the bottom this like realistically doesn't make sense but it's at this point it's just stylistically so you don't really have to do it when you want to learn how to do something stylistically i'd learn how to do it realistically first and then i would go back and actually do it stylistically i don't know if you get me but yeah now i take an overlay i take the light color that i had originally which was like a light orange and then i just kind of go over it I set it to the brightest and then I change back the opacity to where it looks the best and it looks the best at like this point. I'm going to add a little bit over here and on the ponytail and then yeah. Now I'm going to put a, la a normal layer underneath the hair. I'm going to take a color from here and with the marker tool I'm just going to add little strands of hair. Just like this this way it looks like it's a little messy and it actually looks kind of like hair and then yeah 
That is how I color hair. All right, lastly, I'm gonna add a little bit of reflecting. I'm gonna put this to a normal layer. I'm gonna pick like a saturated blue. And I'm gonna sketch so gonna add these little blue things and then I'm gonna put it to lumina lumi and shade and then I'm just gonna tone it down so now it looks right, I'm gonna kind of fix this a little to make it more horizontal and then boom I'm just gonna turn it down and then yeah this is how I do hair so if this was a good tutorial for you, uh, you should subscribe and leave a like showing that I did something good and follow my Instagram. That's where I mostly post all my videos or my pictures. And yeah, I'm going to be posting more speed paints and tutorials in the future. So I'd subscribe for that. And I don't know. See ya.